let's explore the basics of Genomi Digitizer version 5 software. One of the best places to start is the help menu. Use the drop downs for getting started, finding your release notes, user guide, a quick link to projects. You can also check for updates. The software will automatically prompt you for updates. Select getting started. And this brings up the dialog in a web browser that can guide you through the basics of getting started in the software. Also, you'll find the link for the user guide and projects, which is a great way to begin to learn to use your software. The getting started and user guide also contain built-in training videos, which are another great resource for learning. You'll want to begin by opening the Manage Designs toolbox. Click on Manage Designs, and this is where you'll have access to your embroidery library. The software automatically creates an embroidery library for you on your computer. Selecting Find Embroidery Designs will allow the software to locate each embroidery that you have stored on your computer or attached hard drives. The software does not move or copy any of the embroidery files. It just keeps a note of the location and keeps a graphic image so that whenever you want to open a design, you're able to locate it visually and just click on the image and the software will automatically open your embroidery. This means you'll never lose embroidery designs again. You also have the ability for converting embroidery files and even doing batch conversions in this window. If I select multiple embroidery designs by holding down the shift key, I can then select convert selected designs. And the dialog opens where I can select which file formats I would like my designs to be converted to, and then browse to the folder that I would like those designs sent into. There are also tools for locating designs with Find, as well as filters and sorting options to fine tune the design that you're looking for. I can click on a design and get the information on that design. I can select open or I can just double click on the design. This opens my design and you can see the name of the original file. Any changes that I make to the design, if I selected to save, would permanently alter my original design. Sometimes it's safer to select file and insert design into a new blank space. So select a blank tab. Your tabs will be open across the top for any available designs. The My Designs tab takes you right into your Manage folder where you can view your embroidery library. I'll select my blank design and then use the drop down file and insert design. Then I can select from a design of my choice open that design and it's saved as a entirely new design so any changes that I make will not permanently alter the original. Let's customize a design. Go ahead and open the Customize Design Toolbox and we'll take a look at our options for fabric and color. The Auto Fabric function allows the software to change a design depending on the fabric that it will be stitched on. Put a check mark in Apply Auto Fabric and use the drop down list to select the fabric you'll be stitching your design on. The software will make the adjustments to the design for that particular fabric and suggest appropriate stabilizers. Embroidery designs can be viewed on fabric and on actual garments. All of this is controlled in background and display color. Select background and display color and factory articles can be selected. Use the drop down menu to select the item of your choice. I'll select a polo shirt and then use the color drop down, more colors or custom colors to create almost any color of a garment. Select OK. Use the zoom tools, the mouse to zoom out, select the design and move it into the appropriate spot on the garment. This is a great way to check the size and coloring of your design. 
To view a design in its actual size, you want to make sure that you go into Software Settings and select Screen Calibration. This pops up a dialog box that you are going to measure. Carefully measure the dimensions of this dialog box, top to bottom and side to side. And all of the designs, when selected as one to one will then be the actual size of the finished embroidery. Designs are automatically grouped so that when you select a design, all elements of that design are selected at the same time. If you right click, you can ungroup a design. You can view your design in true view or in stitch view and change quickly between metric and US measurement. The toolbars in the software are interactive. So when I select my design, you'll see that the toolbar changes. I have the option for ungrouping. I can see the size of my design. I'll deselect and the toolbar changes. I can turn hoops on and off, rotate my hoop, and again, switch back and forth to metric or US measure, as well as turning my background on and off. The software offers great opportunities for changing color of design. A new tool is Cycle Used Color, and this rotates between all of the colors used in that design. Great way to repurpose a design using the same colorway. And there's also the color wheel. The color wheel offers great opportunities for learning about color theory. Everything from analogous to being able to select a monochromatic design if you needed to have a design stitched in one particular color. The threads are automatically matched to the colors that are created by the software. To select a thread palette, click on My Threads, select Match All, and the colors will be matched automatically to the thread chart of your choice. Select OK. The Color Pick tool can also be used to change color Color. Select the pick tool, select the color of your choice, and then fill into the areas that you would like to apply that color. Now this design is grouped and so when I select it, all objects are selected together. But if I wanted to just make a change to an individual object, I can do that by holding down the Alt key on the keyboard while I select just one of the objects in the design. And then I can change that independent of the other pieces. My design still remains grouped. I'll close this design without saving any of the changes to it and selecting to open a recent design. And you can see all the images of your recently opened design. And I'll double click to open the flower eight. The colors of my design are going to show in the resequence panel. And I can also choose to view objects where I'll see the object and object type. I can go back to viewing colors. While I'm in objects, if I wanted to delete an object or move an object, I can use the arrows at the bottom of the resequence docker. I'll switch back to colors and you can add colors to the palette that you'll see on the lower left hand side. Your current color will always be in the very bottom left. You can pick and apply colors as we did earlier. I can add colors to the palette and I can remove colors from the palette. I can hide the unused removed. I can also access my thread information here. If I'd like to change my thread chart, I can do that. I can also go here to manage my thread charts and create my own colors. I can view my thread with numeric values, names, and see my thread charts. I'll select OK and close the docker. Let's take a look now at the layout menu in the toolboxes. Let's roll out the layout toolbox. And the first thing we'll do is define a work area. Select define work area. I'll select 12 inches by 12 inches. And a square is fine. Let's make that white and select OK. You won't see any changes on your screen until you go up to the show drop down menu and turn on the work area. Let's use the zoom tools. We can zoom out, use the zoom out icon or scroll your mouse. You can also enter a direct value for your zoom factor. If I click in an object of my design, I can see that the design did not come in grouped together. Each object can be selected and moved independently.
I'm going to drag a bounding box. I could also use the Edit Select All drop down or, or shortcut. Once everything is selected, I'm going to come up and select the option to group these pieces together. So when I select the design, the entire design is selected as a unit. Now the first selection gives me my corner bounding boxes. If I want to resize proportionally, I can use any one of the corner boxes and I can just pull that. If I would like to skew or make a design wider or taller, I use the center bounding boxes. If I click on the design again, the bounding boxes become open. They're no longer solid and this is where I can rotate my design. The circle in the center lets me move my angle of rotation and rotate around that specific point. Click again to get the solid bounding boxes for resizing. In the layout toolbox, the first option is for inserting another design into the workspace. I can also duplicate my design. If I click duplicate, I get an exact copy right on top of my first copy. I can also duplicate by cloning. I can clone by holding down the right mouse key, keeping it held down and dragging off to the side. This creates a clone. Then when I use duplicate with offset, a new object is created in the exact space of the clone or where I moved the duplicate. Let's undo those and go back to our original. We can use the mirror copy horizontal to bring in another design and automatically place it side to side horizontally. Mirror copy vertical is a vertical duplicate and the option to copy both horizontal and vertical simultaneously brings in three more of the designs to create a symmetrical layout. I'll undo to mirror copy to work area corners. Move your design into the corner spot that you would like it. I'm going to delete my duplicate that I had underneath. Select the design and then select mirror copy to work area corners. And you'll see the preview of the embroidery designs. In the previous mirrors, we just had to click to actually see the design. I can click here, but what I need to do is hit return on the keyboard and the software will place those additional copies into the work area corner symmetrically. I'll undo and go back to my original. And one of the other options is for a circular layout. Select circle layout and you'll see the preview images of where you can place your design. You can change the number of the designs that you would like in the circle in the upper menu. Bring those designs in until you have something that you like the preview and when you like it just click the mouse button and your designs all appear. You have the option to, to auto center to work area which will move the design and just hit enter and that will automatically center that design to your work area. When I look at the resequence menu I can see that there are way too many thread changes in this design. The reason is because we worked with the object grouped and so each one of the combinations of pink and green is a grouped set of colors. There's two different ways to work with designs to create just the two color stops that we want, pink first and then a green thread change. I'm going to select the entire design by dragging a bounding box around it, and then I'll select the option to ungroup. And this ungroups all the objects so that when you click on them, you can see that each can be selected independently. Now in the Customize Design Toolbox, if I roll that out, are our color options, and this is where we could optimize color changes. Select that, and the software will automatically reduce the color changes from 3 to 5, and select OK to continue. If there are areas that it felt, if we either had areas that were touching or that one should come before another, the software will always organize the colors in the best manner for stitch out. We can visually see here, however, that the pink would be just fine if the pink stitches first and then the green. We can manually change that using the resequence menu. I'll select the first pink square and then use my up to move it up to the top of the color stitch out. Select the second pink square and up again, which moves that square into place. And now the design will stitch with all the pink, 
portion stitching first and I can see that that looks clean and then the green stitching second and that's the way that I would want to export this design. Let's take a look at one more option for creating these types of designs with automatic merging of colors. So I'm going to select and delete the design and I'll select insert design and select a different design to bring in and this time when I use the circle layout I'll make sure that everything is ungrouped so I can select each one of these individual objects. I'll select my object and I'll select circle layout. Create my design and you can see that the software now automatically sorted the colors in just the way that I would like. We have one more option and I'm going to select one of these pieces and set it to the side and then select and delete the rest of the design. I'm going to zoom in using the zoom tool very close to this piece here. We'll select that and then select the circle layout tool one more time and I'll bring these pieces together to create a little flower. Because these independent objects were touching each other, the software gives you the option to merge any portions that are overlapped. And so I, if I select yes, it will turn this into one object. So if I check in objects, you can see that this is a single object. It does not consist of the independent puddles that have independent stitch direction. I undo that and let's do the circle layout one more time and this time if I bring those points together and select not to merge the overlap you can see that the objects remain independent and each keep their own stitch angles. We'll cover buttonholes at a later lesson. Let's go up into manage designs. First close this design out without saving any of the changes and open either the My Designs tab or your Manage Design Toolbox. In the Embroidery Library, select the Public Embroidery Digitizer version 5, select Designs, and come down and select Flowers. We'll select Elegant Floral 3D. Double-click to open the design. This design contains three-dimensional satin stitching. The way that you can know that is by looking in Object Properties. There's a few ways to open up Object Properties. I can right click on the selected design and select Object Properties. I can use the Edit drop down menu to select Object Properties. Or I can open the Edit Objects toolbox and find Object Properties right at the top. When Object Properties opens, if you select a stitch, I can see that this stitching is three-dimensional satin, and it's meant to stitch in three layers. Instead of having this heavyweight design, let's edit this design to stitch out on a lightweight piece of fabric with minimal stabilizer. We'll put into practice some of the things that we've already covered in this lesson to kind of sum it all up. Now, I'd like to select only the white part of this flower and maybe change the colors. When I select it, I can see that my design is grouped. To work on objects independently, I'll need to ungroup. I'll switch my resequence menu to see the colors of my design and open up my threads palette. I can move my design so that my design is visible in one window and then I have my three of my dockers open. I can select the white leaves by selecting the white color chip and then picking a color of my choice from my thread palette. Remember that you can change your thread charts and work with your own thread palette and colors. I'll select the next color of the design and change to a, a color of my choice for that by double clicking on the color in my palette. I can then select an independent object and select another color moving through my thread palette and once I like the colors of my design, I close that My Threads Docker. I'll begin by working on the three-dimensional portion, the, the leaves in the flower, by selecting the green color chip at the top of the resequence Docker. I'm going to change the option of three-dimensional satin to a contour fill in the Object Properties Docker just by selecting it. And then I can change independently the spacing and the length of the stitches.
I like to work in metric, so I'm going to deselect my design and come up to the upper toolbox and change to metric. Then I reselect the object that I'm working on. I'll change the stitch spacing from 1.5 to 2 to make this even more lightweight, and I select Enter on the keyboard. Now I'll begin to work on the petal portion of my flower, and I think I might like to have that stitch next in the color order. So I use the up arrow, and I move that color chip up, and I would like to change that from three-dimensional satin to a tatami fill. So I select Tatami. I would like to increase the spacing, so I'll work with 0.8 and try that and see if that opens that fill up just a little bit and enter on the keyboard. I'll also want to select Travel on Edges to remove any stitches from underneath that area. Next we'll work on the fill, the orange fill that I have here on the inside. Select that color chip. To be able to see a little bit better, I'm going to select the Fit Zoom to zoom in on the design. The software sees that this is a satin stitch, but I look at the edges and I have a feeling in the Effects tab, if I click on Effects, yes, one of the sides of that satin stitch is feathered. I like that look, so I'm going to leave that. Now in the Stitching tab, this is where we can change any options on underlay, tie-off connectors, and we'll deal with that in a little bit more detail later. Let's go back to the line properties of this object as this is seen as a satin stitch line. We can adjust the spacing. Again, I'm going to try a 0.8 spacing and enter on the keyboard to see how that looks. And I'm going to change the width to maybe a five millimeter stitch and I really like the way that looks almost like a star. So I've changed the spacing and the width of that satin stitching. I could also change the size. Now I can drag it larger. I could also change it up here in the width and height dialog. I'm going to try for 16 width and height. Now they are going to change proportionally because the proportional scaling lock right here is locked down to change disproportionately, you just click to undo the lock, click to lock it back up for proportional scaling. I'm going to click enter and I can watch that expand over the top of the stitching of the red portion, the petals of the flower. I like the way that looks and so now I'm going to move on to the center portion by clicking on either the element, the object, or the yellow color chip. So with the yellow color chip selected, I can see that this is stem stitching. First, I'd like to decrease the density. Instead of a triple stem stitch, let's take it to a single, and that will reduce the density at the center of the flower a little. Open the stitch spacing up by changing the spacing. Um, I'll try 0.8 again and enter, and that opened that up quite a bit. And the width then could be changed to something a little bit wider, maybe a 2 to fill in a little. I'll deselect and use my zoom tool. This is where I can select the zoom by dragging a bounding box around it and zoom in and take a look. And I do get a, a nice circular shape and a center. And I'll zoom back out by zoom to fit. That's also the zero on the keyboard. So now that I've made adjustments to the flower, I'm going to add another element to it. I'll select this small leaf and right click and drag to clone another. I can resize that leaf, click again to rotate it into place and have it be one more element of the flower. I'll deselect and use the optimize color changes and I don't like the way it's going to increase from 4 to 5, so I'm going to cancel that and manually just select my color chip, and I can select Move to Top. And now this will stitch first in my design, and I can tuck it right underneath a bit of the petal there. Any of these elements, if I like to click and move them, I can adjust the spacing, adjust the angle of any of the elements, until I like my finished design. I'm going to zoom out, and I could also use 
the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom out, select my entire design and group it. I'll click and give it a bit of an angle for interest and then select the layout tab where I can select a circular layout and bring all of these elements together and preview how this is going to stitch out there and click when I like the layout and I did not ungroup before I used my layout and so I could always undo, select my element, ungroup it, reselect and reselect the circle layout, bring that back together again finding that same layout and click and now my design comes out with only four color changes which is exactly the way I'd like it and now we'll export it to the machine for stitching. Select the machine of your choice from the drop down menu. There are others available here besides the Janome and Elna machines. I'm going to select my 15,000 and you do need to turn the hoop icon on. So select show hoop and then use the drop down list to select the hoop of your choice and I will zoom out so that I can see my design a little bit better and then center that into my hoop. I'm now ready to save and export my design. Select the output design toolbox. You're first prompted to save your design. Click Save Design As. This allows you to rename your design. I don't want to overwrite the original, so I'm going to name mine a lightweight, elegant floral, and I can save my design. Now I am saving in the Wilcom EMB embroidery format. Uh, you can save in Jan, but the new object-based file format for the software is EMB. And great because it's a much more universal file format for embroidery designs. Now that I've saved, I'll replace and the dialog closes and I'm next prompted to export a design. And as I export a design, this is where I can select from all the stitching file formats. And my original is what stays on my computer. This stitching file format goes temporarily to the machine and then I don't need to save that permanently. I'll select Jeff from my options and I could save this directly to any USB stick that's attached to my computer. I can export my design this way. I can also write it directly to a USB cord or send the design to the machine. If I turn off my hoop, I can capture a design image and this will save a three-dimensional graphic of my design and I can have it not include the background so I have a beautiful transparent graphic of my design as well as the options for printing your design, print and you have print preview where you can select the different elements in the options menu that you would like to have included in your file printout. I'll cancel and close my print preview page and the design is now ready to go to the machine. <music>